In this video, we're going to be talking about special factoring techniques. More can be found in section 5.7 of your text. The first special case for factoring we'll talk about is difference perfect squares. If we have a squared minus b squared and we want to factor this, we can express this as a squared plus ab minus ab minus b squared. So notice positive ab and negative b cancel out and give us zero. So this is still equal to the same thing. But here we see we can factor this by grouping. We have a common factor of a over here and a common factor of b over here. So over here we factored out negative a, that's why we have an a plus b here. Then we factor again and we end up with a plus b, a minus b. And the general formula we have here is a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b. And when we say difference of perfect squares, the perfect squares here that we're talking about are a squared and b squared. Now, one important warning is that sums of squares are not factorable. If you have something like x squared plus 100, we saw in the video on prime polynomials, you can't factor this. This, even though x is a perfect square and 100 is a perfect square, we can't factor it. Now let's look at a couple of examples. For example a, we can see that our perfect squares here, we have an x squared, and 64 is also a perfect square, that's 8 squared. So we have x squared minus 8 squared, and now we can factor this into x plus 8 times x minus 8. Now let's look at b. b is a little bit more complicated because we have some coefficients, but notice that our coefficients are also perfect squares. 25 is 5 squared, 4 is 2 squared. So we can rewrite this as 5a in parentheses squared, remember our exponent rules, minus 2b in parentheses squared. So remember the way we would evaluate this using exponent rules, we'd have to square the 5 and the a, and over here we'd be squaring the 2 and we'd be squaring b, and we'd end up back with what we started with. But now that we see we have a difference of two perfect squares, we can express this as 5a plus 2b times 5a minus 2b. And now let's say you aren't sure about whether or not this is the right answer. You can always check by multiplying these out. 5a times 5a, 25a squared, 5a times 2b, 10ab, 5a times negative 2b, negative 10ab, negative 2b times positive 2b, negative 4b squared. Then we have 25a squared plus 10ab minus 10ab minus 4b squared. And notice these guys cancel out. We're left with 25a minus 4b squared. Now let's take a look at example c. And I know exactly what you're thinking when you look at example C. Why is there a power of 4 and a power of 6 in here? However, these are actually squares, they just look different. If we remember our rules for exponents, when you raise an exponent to a higher power, you multiply the powers, and these are both even powers. We can actually rewrite x to the fourth as x squared squared. We would do 2 times 2 here, and this would become x to the fourth and we can rewrite y to the sixth as y cubed squared. And here we'd multiply the three and two together and get y to the sixth. Now we have x squared squared and y cubed squared, so we do have the difference of two squares here. And we can factor this into x squared plus y cubed times x squared minus y cubed. The next technique we're going to talk about here is perfect square trinomials. There's one thing to note is that this is not the same thing as difference of perfect squares. What we mean by perfect square trinomials is that the trinomial itself is the perfect square. Like 25 is a perfect square because it has a square root. A perfect square trinomial has a square root. It's just going to be two polynomials that are the same. If we have a minus b squared, that's the same thing as a minus b times a minus b. So whatever this multiplies out into is going to be a perfect square whose square root is a minus b. And what this multiplies out into is a squared minus ab minus ab 
plus b squared, which we can then simplify to a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So whenever you see a trinomial of this form, something squared minus twice the square root of the first times the square root of the second plus the second thing squared, this is the form of a perfect square trinomial. It'll make a little bit more sense when we see some examples. Now we'll talk about what the square of a sum would look like. So same thing if we have a plus b. a plus b times a plus b. So if you see polynomials that have this form, it's easily factorable into a minus b squared or a plus b squared. Now note these polynomials can all be factored also using a C method. You don't need to immediately recognize that they are perfect square trinomials, but sometimes it can make your life easier. So let's look at an example here. x is being squared, 36 is a perfect square, and now we can rewrite 12 as 2 times 6 times x. x was the square root we had over here. The square root we had over here was 6. So in this case, it's like x is our a, 6 is our b, and here we have 2 times a times b. So this we will be able to factor into x plus 6 squared. You also could have factored this using a c if you didn't recognize this. Now for part b, I would suggest pausing the video here, try to work through it on your own, then hit play to see me go through the answer. So here we can rewrite 36a squared as in parentheses 6a squared, 25 we can rewrite as 5 squared, and now let's look at negative 60. This is going to be minus, we want to hope it's minus 2 times 6a times 5. And if we multiply negative 2 times 6a times 5, we do end up with negative 60a. So this is also the form of a perfect square trinomial, except because our 2 here is negative, it's going to be a difference. So this will be factorable into 6a minus 5 squared. Now let's look at some more examples. For part c, we can express 6m squared as 4m in parentheses squared and we can express 49n squared as 7n in parentheses squared. That can give us some clues to see if we can break down this negative 56mn into a minus 2ab where a is 4m and b is 7n. This is negative 2 and this actually does multiply out to negative 56 so this works, and we can, using this form, say that it factors into 4m minus 7n squared. Now for example d, I would suggest pausing the video, try to work through it on your own, then hit play to see me go through the solution. Right now I'll review how to factor this by recognizing that this is a perfect square trinomial, but if you were given something like this on an exam and you wanted to factor it with the AC method, that's completely fine. Here we can rewrite x squared as x in parentheses squared, 9 as 3 squared, and we can say 6 is, what do we have, negative 2 times x times 3. So this is the form of a perfect square trinomial, and we can factor this as x minus 3 squared.